Now we need to get the shipping cost. Now, this is something that you may or may not have to do, and it depends entirely on your shopping cart and what you're selling. You know, but PayPal does support shipping, so I want to show you how you can do that here. So here I'm going to say shipping amount, and I'm going to say shopping cart get item shipping cost. And you can do the same thing with tax as well. You can apply tax just like you apply shipping. And you can have you can have rules, you can have business rules associated with that as well. So for the shipping cost, for me I want to keep my shipping cost relatively straightforward. So in order to do that, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna create another public function. So we've got get item shipping cost. This is another thing that PayPal likes to have so that it can know how much the shipping is for each item. And so I'm going to say public function get item shipping cost. Pass in the product ID. And here I'm going to say return this items and I'm going to have the product. Now we need to multiply that by however time, many times we have the item. So this is where the original cost of the item, if let's say our shipping cost for tomato soup is two bucks. Well, we might want to say that if you buy 10, pan, 10 cans of tomato soup, or if you buy 10 of any item, then you know the shipping cost is this, or the shipping cost is that. Uh, you could do it any which way you want. Um, however, I'm doing it just this very simple way because it makes sense for the tutorial, but if you were writing your own shopping cart, this is probably where you would deviate and set things up however which way they made sense to what you were selling. But I'm going to say I want to multiply the item quantity. So I'm going to say this get item quantity of the product ID. And I'm going to multiply that by this. Now you're going to notice I'm using a lowercase get this time. Shipping cost for. And I'm going to say get item cost. And then I'm going to say product ID. All right, now let's explain this for a second. We want to take the item quantity for a particular product ID. And we want to multiply that by the shipping cost. Now, I'm not exactly sure. The way, the way I'm doing this right now is I'm basically saying, OK, whatever the item is cost, its cost is, I'm going to pass that into the shipping cost. So if something is 6 bucks, then getting shipping cost for 6 bucks is going to return a certain amount. And let's say, actually, let's just do this. So I'm going to create a private function. And it's going to be get shipping cost for, and I'm going to say price. Now it's important to bear in mind that all these rules are being calculated on the unit price of the item and then multiplied by the quantity. Now we can create certain business rules. So if price is less than 10, for example, let's say it's less than 10 bucks, then your shipping is going to be $1.99. Else if your, let's say your price is over 50 bucks, or sorry, is less than 50 bucks, then your shipping cost is going to be $10.99. And let's say for everything else, if you've got a really big order, then your shipping cost is going to be $34.99. I don't know. So this could be very different depending on how you want to do it. You could check based on the product ID and based on certain products, or you could also have a, for example, in your catalog over here, you could also have weight. And then based on the weight of an object that you're shipping, you could pass that into your shopping cart and your shopping cart could figure out what the shipping costs are for. Or another way of doing this is to actually pass into the shopping cart where you're from, pick in the address and then you know if you're doing something outside of North America 
then you could also have rules for that as well. But this is the underlying framework that we're going to be working with. So it's a very simple shipping calculator, but just to give you an idea of where you would want to store the logic for that. Now, for now, to keep things a little simple, hopefully, I'm just going to add a break tag here, and I'm going to say shipping amount is shipping amount. And just like we have the amount here, I'm also going to put in a break tag, and I'm going to say unit cost is, and then the unit cost. And I'm just going to refresh that. So we can tell that for 931, shipping amount is... is third okay for for eight of these guys my shipping amount is going to be fifteen dollars and my unit cost is a dollar thirty three for each one of these cans of tomato soup so what i've done let's just go back to our calculator here is i've basically taken the shipping cost for a dollar ninety nine and i've multiplied it by the item quantity so i've got eight items at a dollar ninety nine and my shipping cost for each item is $1.99, and I'm multiplying $1.99 times 8. And that's how we're getting $15 for a $10 order, which may or may not make sense depending on what you're selling. Anyways, so now that we have these variables in place, we've pretty much flushed out most of our, of our shopping cart. Uh, we can add to it. We can clear it. Uh, we are now in a position, let's just go back, oh, view, cart, view cart doesn't exist yet, so let's, let's do that in a minute, but for now, let's just add some more items to our existing shopping cart. So I'm going to go back to view store, I'm going to add another thing of tomato soup, I'm going to add some linguine, I'm going to add some fresh cumin, and you can see that our quantities are starting to come up here. And I'm just going to quickly go back and I'm going to style this. So we're going to call this shopping cart. Another neat little section. I'm going to say shopping cart. And the width of this table is going to be, I don't know, 600 pixels. Border is going to be one pixel solid, light gray. Border collapse. I'm going to set this to collapse. What this means is that we're not going to get double borders. It's going to collapse them down if it notices that the neighbor has a border. I'm going to set this to margin zero auto, which is going to align its center. Shopping cart TRTH. So we're going into the table row and into the table head. And in here, I want the background to be EA, 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 which is going to be a little lighter than CCCC, or CCC, which is the same thing as CC, CC, CC. This is the same, but it's just shorthand. And I'm going to set another border here to one pixel solid CCC. And we're going to add a little bit of padding. I'm going to refresh that. So already this is looking a little better. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say shopping cart TRTD. So these are the actual cells. And they're also going to have a one pixel border and a bit of padding. All right. Oh, I've got a dot here. There we go. Well, this is starting to come together, slowly but surely. Let's go back to our Add to Cart page. Now, this function here, Render Shopping Cart Row, we can probably just move that into our templates file at this point. So I'm just going to delete that, cut that out, and then go to the templates file and drop it in here. So this is going to, we're going to create a section called Shopping Cart Templates. In the next video, we're going to be 
creating new templates for calculating the subtotal and the shipping row and finalizing our shopping cart page before going to PayPal. Thanks for listening.